All right, Charles Law is the next one that we're gonna cover. And you can see the formula here for Charles Law. And if you remember again from the kinetic molecular theory, Charles Law states that uh, if a, a volume of a gas goes up, then the temperature of a gas is also gonna go up. Or if the temperature of a gas goes up, then the volume of the gas is gonna go up. So if you think about this, if I heat up a balloon, then the molecules in that balloon, the gas molecules in that balloon, is going or they're going to start moving faster and if they start moving faster then that's going to push on the walls of the balloon a lot more making the balloon get bigger and so uh, if the temperature goes up by a factor of 10 then the volume is going to go up by a factor of 10 and so this is the formula that we have in order to to show that relationship so v1 over t1 equals v2 over t2 v1 and t1 are the initial volumes and initial temperature uh initial volume and initial temperature v2 and t2 is the uh, the final volume and the final temperature so one other thing to point out about this formula uh, are the temperatures now the temperatures are written as a capital t and if you look in your data booklet uh, you'll see some notations there on page two where it shows that a capital T means temperature in Kelvin. And so when you're doing this uh, problem here, these temperatures have to be plugged in as Kelvin temperatures. So if the question, for example, you can see over here, this example uh, gives temperatures in degrees Celsius, you have to convert those temperatures in degrees Celsius into Kelvin temperatures in order to plug this into the formula correctly and get the correct answer. So let's read this uh, example, go through this problem and, and show you how I would show the work for this and what my expectations are. So it says here, if a balloon's placed in a fridge with a temperature of four degrees Celsius, where, the, where its initial temperature was 22 degrees Celsius and initial volume was 0 0.50 liters, what will be the new volume of the balloon when it's fully cooled by the fridge? So something that I noticed that kids do lots with problems like this is they like to skip the words and they like to just pick out all the numbers. And they'll say, okay, here's my first number. It's a temperature. Mr. Orr says it's gotta be in Kelvin. So let's put it into Kelvin and that's T1. Well, if you read the question carefully, you'll notice that this is the temperature of the balloon once it's fully cooled by four degrees Celsius. So that's actually T2. So don't get into the groove of thinking that whatever numbers are listed first, that's going to be my initial numbers. You have to read it and understand the paragraph that's actually written there and identify, okay, hey, it says the initial temperature was 22 degrees Celsius. So that's my T1, four degrees Celsius is gonna be my T2. And so the order in which those numbers show up doesn't always mean initial to final. You have to read it and be careful with that. Okay, so four degrees Celsius added to 273, that's gonna be 277. So this is my temperature in Kelvin, uh, T2. My uh, T1 is 22 degrees Celsius, add that to 273, that's gonna give me 290, uh, 295. Yep, and, and my initial volume tells me it's 0 0.050 liters and so what's the final volume of the balloon that's what i'm looking for so i take these numbers now i plug them into my formula but before i do that i want to rearrange the formula so i'm solving for v2 so i've got t2 on the bottom here v2 is what i'm looking for so if i'm dividing by t2 to get rid of that i have to multiply by t2 and so what i do to one side i have to do to the other so v2 is equal to T2 times V1 divided by T1. And then I can plug those numbers in. Again, remember you show your work, make sure the units are consistent and uh, everything should be fine. So T2 is 277 Kelvin times V1 divided by T1, 295 Kelvin. You go ahead and plug that into your calculator. Make sure that, again, you're putting the units in to the formula. It's very important that you show your units. Uh, really good habit to get into, so please make sure you're showing your units. And you plug this in, and you end up with 0 0.47 
leaders. Now, something to watch out for and pay attention to in terms of temperatures. Because we're converting temperatures from Celsius to Kelvin, you can see it's changing how many significant digits I have. And so just to make, it, make things simple, for Chem 20, what I tell my Chem 20 students is temperature doesn't have a bearing on significant digits, okay? So don't use your sig digs in your temperature numbers to determine how many sig digs you're going to write your answer to. Uh, in this case, it didn't matter for this question, but in other cases it might. So just ignore sig, sig digs for temperature numbers. This is the only number I would use to determine how many sig digs I should be writing my answer to. So 0 0.50's got two sig digs, so my answer is gonna have two significant digits. I'm gonna do one more problem to show one more thing that, that uh, I often see kids do. Uh, and so I'll be right back with that next problem, and then we'll close this one out. Here's our last problem that we're gonna talk about as it relates to Charles Law. And you can see the problem here is written out, and then I've, I've identified all the numbers that, that go in there. Uh, what this is just saying is it's saying you've got a balloon, you heat it up, it changes volume from 1 liter to 1.2 liters. The initial temperature of the gas was 20 degrees Celsius or 293 Kelvin. So what's the final temperature of the gas? And so we're looking for T2 here. And here's the most common mistake that kids will make is they'll say, okay, I'm solving for T2, so I need to get T2 by itself. So I'm multiplying by V2 over here, which means I divide by T2, or V2, and so I put V2 on the bottom over there. And that means that's my formula. So now I have T2 is equal to this. And that's not right, okay? And the reason why it's not right is because you have to remember that you left T2 on the bottom. So if you took away V2 and put it over here, T2 is on the bottom. And so what you solved for was not T2, but you solved for one over T2. And that's not the same thing. If someone's asking you to solve for x or solve for 1 over x, they're asking you for two different things. And so what you have to make sure that you're doing when you solve for an unknown that's on the bottom of a fraction, it's the denominator in a fraction, is what I like to do first is I just like to flip the, the fraction so that the unknown is on the top. And as long as you're following algebra rules, which is what I do to one side, I have to do to the other, then you'll be okay. So if I write this like this, T2 over V2, then I just need to do that to this side. And so now I can solve for T2 by multiplying by V2. V2 cancels, it goes over here on the top. And so my T2 is equal to V2 over T1 over V1. Then I can plug my numbers in. And V2 is 1.20 liters, 293 Kelvin, divided by 1.00 liters. You can see that my liters cancel. I'm left with units of Kelvin. And I get my answer right here. So go ahead and plug that into your calculator and make sure that you round to the correct number of significant digits. Uh, thanks for being with me in this one, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.